Dayton. You're oh, from Dayton, really? Ohio? Yeah. I'm from well, St. Louis. Yeah, I knew, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, that, what our parents were listening to, I mean, for that time, for, you know, black kids in the Midwest was probably a little right. strange. And I was from Dayton watching Sister Act 2, just trying to be <laughs> in the choir, singing the solo. Trying to be down with Lauren Hill. <laughs> about both of you. Rule breakers, game changers, innovators, often imitated, never duplicated. <laughs> All the way back, I'd love to know what you listened to back when you were kids. Ooh. Do you remember first like tape purchase? Oh, well I remember before that. I just remember in my house it was jazz all day. It was classic jazz, it was fusion jazz, big Miles Davis house. But then at the same time, I had young parents, so they were also listening to, you know, the R&B of the 80s, the hip hop of the 80s, which turned into the, the rap of the 90s. I think the first CD that I purchased with my own money was Nevermind by Nirvana. I remember asking my dad to drive me to the Sam Goody <laughs> so I could get the CD, and then I get in the car, and he's like, I put it in, he's like, this is what you wanted to buy? I'm like, yeah. Like, um, <laughs> Can't touch this on tape. Yeah. Can't touch this. Amazing. That was my first, that was my first purchase. Amazing. You don't regret it? I don't at all. Nah, yeah, see, I don't hammer the was the shit. <laughs> don't front. It's a beautiful thing. Never. Okay, fast forward. I would die to know if you both have any like current top 40 favorites right now. Oh yeah. Go. <laughs> you want to know what? Jack. The only thing on rotation in my car right now is Feature 56 Night. Okay. That mixtape is killing me. Okay. And then anything that Drake does I love. He has a lot of, of, of depth which I like and he does a lot of things that you wouldn't expect from a guy like that and I, I dig that shit. Yeah. But Feature, you're my favorite. Ooh. I know this might, this might sound bias or cliche, but Miguel. Miguel. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> you know. I mean, when it comes to like, I mean, he's just an artist to like the nth degree. Yes. He's great. We hear both of your names often now affiliated with Miguel. True, yeah? Yeah. yeah. So you're yeah. involved in the new project? Definitely. Yes. Yeah, Brooke um, did some minor production on the single that's out now. And then I've been working with Miguel just to kind of Co-writes the record, which has been great. Check out, look forward to definitely Miguel's. Definitely Wild Heart sometime. This summer, I think he said. Yes, this week. Yes. Flashback to there is a video, Jack, oh, on no. the World Wide Web. Oh, no. <laughs> of you on the Ellen Show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Dancing for your life. Okay. As Ellen. As Ellen. As dressed as <laughs> Ellen D. <laughs> The first job right out of college was as a music assistant and coordinator on the Ellen DeGeneres show. Ellen, you know, dances through all of her monologues. Sure. And so my first job right out of college was as a music assistant and coordinator on the Ellen DeGeneres show. Ellen, you know, dances through all of her monologue. Her back was hurting, so she had somebody else fill in for her. And then she thought it would be funny if the fill-in had a fill-in. <laughs> so I was the fill-in fill-in. And Ellen, I mean, she was the greatest boss and she just loved the way that I danced. I had a blonde wig on and I went ham. <laughs> you you murdered it. it, you murdered it. And the funny thing about it is that was like at the beginning of like YouTube craze. Yeah. And so I'm thinking it was just gonna exist on television and nobody was really gonna nope. see it. Then it pops up on YouTube and I'm like, who is rude enough to Great. put me on blast like that? And who, who to find out on... it was my dad and my uncle. I wanted to challenge you to do a dance off, but it's early. And I yeah, just... may, catch me around 11:30 tonight. Here we go. <laughs> Stay tuned. You're from St. Louis. Let's talk current events. Yeah. Um, Ferguson. From what's still evolving in Ferguson to what's currently going down in Baltimore, which is currently going down across this country, yeah. whether there's a spotlight on it or not. I'm wondering, as musicians, is activism in any of your music? As far as activism goes, I'd rather be active. So music is active to a, to a certain degree, mm -hmm. but um, I just always remember my mother telling me there's just three 
thing that a celebrity or a person in the public eye should never talk about, and that's religion, politics, and OJ. So I kind of keep <laughs> my activism out of my art, and I put it more into my being. I mean, as far as the black man struggle goes, I'm actually in that every day, raising one. So that's my activism right there. I think we're, we're our activism is reflected in uh, authenticity. You know, just just always making sure that whatever our you know whatever our input you know is, it's just like it's just something that's authentic. You know, I think that's our I think that's our responsibility as, as artists. You know, because there's so much of of the opposite that's out there. I think it, it can be a little confusing for just people. You know, and, and you know, music is is definitely something that's very influential. You know, uh, in our lives daily basis so I think the one thing that I like to do is just remain authentic in that new music Yay. new music new music are we going to hear a different sound it's not different it's what we do it's just complete now I feel like mm -hmm. it, it it knows who it is it's very self-aware whereas J. Davies music it was like a, a restless teenager for so long and now I think it's hit its Saturn return. <laughs> it's, it, it knows exactly who it is and what it wants and what it doesn't want. Are there rules now? Or do you feel rules? Do you feel, I mean, back in 2000 when you guys got together, it's a completely different game now. Yeah. I think there's always been rules. Um, we just never were great at following them. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, they, they exist all the time. It's just now it's definitely more of an open market however you want to do things and now it's more of like the element of surprise yes um and the shock value of everything so i think we just for us it's just about cultivating um you know the connection and, and maintaining what we do not really changing in the in the ever-changing world it's a new ep yes any deets you can spill on the new ep I, it's already out there. I know you try to be elusive. But I'm not it's trying in to the be. Premise. I'm not trying to be elusive now. It's, it's uh, and, Pomp, yeah. P O M P. That'll be out. <laughs> Energetically, the EP is, is very, very. Uh, um, it's very fast paced. Mm -hmm. You know, it's gonna bump. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't said anything. It's gonna bump in a minute. I gotta use that. <laughs> you can bring it back. <laughs> Let's go through social media where now new fans can track you down. WeAreJDavy.com. Um, on Twitter and Instagram, WeAreJDavy. That's J D A V E Y. Mm -hmm. This is J Davy. I'm Michael. City of Michael. Yeah. Brooke, Jack. Check out the new music, the new EP, SoundCloud. Follow them. Put it in your eardrums. It'll be good for your life. Yeah. He's right. See you next time. City of Michael. Bye, y'all.